Okay, welcome to our next edition of Just the Facts. I'm Gary McNamara, the Deputy Chief of the Fairfield Police Department. And I'm Sergeant Jim Perez from the uh, Professional Standards and the Department. And we've just uh, taken time out of our holiday, uh, holiday shopping and holiday prep. I know Jim's probably already bought my gift. And uh, Yeah, your, your gift I bought back in okay. July, so, so you're all set. So we're all done with that. And uh, we certainly uh, have received a lot of feedback from last month's show regarding uh, emergency preparedness. And we um, want to switch a little bit from, uh, from what we talked about last month to a, a more serious topic. Uh, in keeping with the holidays, and certainly we understand the holidays are a very festive time and, and a lot of activity occurring, we want to focus entirely this, this month on driving while under the influence and, and the effects of that. With the holiday season coming up, we want to remind everyone how dangerous that can be, and uh, we want to share some really important and really serious information with you. Yeah, and we have some stats that are just kind of baffling. Uh, just in 2007, we had 13,000 deaths uh, DUI-related all across the country. Um, about 500,000 injuries, and in Connecticut alone, we had 101 deaths. Um, so it's really, it's really quite uh, startling when you really think of uh, all, all, all the statistics that we keep. Yeah, and and, uh, and alcohol-related crashes uh, cost an estimated 114 billion dollars annually. Uh, so it's, it's really a significant financial impact let alone the emotional impact as well as the loss of life that, that results in some of these crashes. And first-time offenders have driven 87 times, it's estimated, before their first driving uh, under the influence. And that's quite, a, that's, that's, that's quite a number. I mean, if you really think about it, that's, that, those are the number of times that people are actually out there and that we're out there driving. And, 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 and how, how often we, we do a lot of different things to try and catch them. We run uh, random patrols. We try to get public awareness out there. And probably four to six times a year, we run a sobriety checkpoint. Mm -hmm. Very public event, uh, advertised. We're going to talk a little bit about it and actually show you a little bit about it. But we, we do this sometimes with other police departments, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes our own resources, to try and uh, not only make make people aware of the, the effects, but also catch people that are driving under the influence. And like Deputy Chief says, we, we try to partner up with the community, and, and oftentimes we deal with the local media, like the Connecticut Post and, and all the local papers that actually uh, assist us in being able to get our messages out um, in a timely <clears throat> manner. Yeah, so and, 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 and more important than that is the fact that these checkpoints are designed to get dangerous drivers immediately off the road. They, they go into awareness, but it also really plays a significant point of actually pulling drivers who are dangerous at that particular moment off the road. And our officers are trained to actually spot that. And, and in fairness, uh, we normally in a DUI checkpoint, we, all, we always have a little exit uh, before the actual point um, so that we don't inconvenience those that uh, apparently haven't... Uh uh, had anything to drink, but uh, um, it's it's an important function. Sure, and uh, today we'll be talking to Lieutenant Tom Rozak uh, during an actual reenactment of a sobriety checkpoint. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's really informative. All right, all right, gentlemen, welcome to our holiday DWI roadblock for uh, drunk driving enforcement. As you know, this year our drunk driving effort has probably doubled with the numbers that we've rolled up, and part of our answer is going to be to set up a checkpoint tonight in the center of town, which encompasses uh, several bars in the area. And uh, this roadblock is not so much that you're gonna make arrests during the, it's the, the night, but that the public sees you out there and they know we're in favor of the DWI enforcement. So we're gonna get more publicity out of the checkpoint just by being there, our very presence, than we would by making dozens of arrests. So Lieutenant, can you explain uh, what a sobriety checkpoint consists of? Normally we run a, a field sobriety checkpoint with uh, eight to nine officers. We have our first officer at the beginning of the checkpoint, which is our greeter. And he informs the people why they're being slowed down, why they're being asked to stop, and to make sure they have their license and registrations ready for the following group of officers who are the checking officers. And they just uh, speak to the operator, check their license and registration quickly, see if they have any reason to have the vehicle pulled out of the line of traffic and possibly do some field sobriety check. Uh, exercises. Now, uh, when is the best time to actually conduct a, a sobriety test? Any time of day is a good time to do a field sobriety checkpoints, but we find we get the most out of them on the evenings. Uh, there's more people out and about with families. They get this not only experience going through our checkpoint, but they have a, a large word of mouth among their families and friends that say they went through a checkpoint and not only do we catch some 
under, a, uh, under the influence operators, but the word travels through our community that we're serious about DWI enforcement. Good evening. Roll your window down for me. I'm Officer Fracassini with the police department. What we're doing is conducting a DUI checkpoint. Have you had anything to drink tonight? Maybe like a couple of beers. Huh? A couple of beers? How long ago, huh? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Where are you heading? Uh, just going home. And where are you coming from? I've just been out with some friends. Just out where? Uh, at a friend's house. Okay. Put the car in park for me. All the way up, go ahead. Oh, Very good. Now turn it off. What I want you to do is step out for me, okay? How much have you had to drink? I told you, just a couple of beers. All right, come up on the sidewalk with me. What I want you to do is conduct, I want to conduct a couple of field side sobriety tests, okay? All right, fine. Okay. Any problems with your eyes inside your glasses? No. Nothing at all? No. Do you have any physical disabilities which would stop you from trying to do any of the tests I'm going to ask you to do? No. No? Okay. Put your finger on the tip of my pen. Okay. Put it back down. Straighten out for me, okay? Very good. What I want you to do is I want you to follow my pen with your eyes. Can you take your glasses off for me? Very good. Okay. 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 What I want you to do is I want you to follow your eye, my, follow my pen with your eyes. Don't move your head, okay? You understand that? Don't move your head. Don't move your head. Keep your head still. Just follow it with your eyes. Don't move your head. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you this one more time. Don't move your head. Follow it with your eyes. Understood? Okay, when I stop a car at a checkpoint, what I'm watching for is I walk up to the car, I'm looking inside the car, I'm watching the driver's mannerisms, his eyes, and basically looking for a smell of alcohol on him. We're checking his license, his registration. If the license and registration is not valid or it's suspended, that vehicle will be towed and they'll receive a ticket. Um, if we do find somebody that we suspect of being under the influence, we will pull them out of the car, ask them to step out of the car, and we will perform what we call standardized field sobriety tests. And the reason they're called standardized field sobriety tests is that they're all done the same every time, each time you do them, okay? The first one I do and always do first is called the horizontal gaze and nystagmus test. And what you're looking for there is you're looking for per when, you, when somebody drinks, they cannot control their eyes. And the eyes will, when, when I look at somebody's eyes, I'm looking for smooth pursuit as I test your eyes as I go across. I'll have you go back and forth with your eyes watching my finger and looking for your eyes to be smooth as they glide across. If they're not smooth, they'll bounce across, meaning you did have something to drink. And we'll go on to the next test, which is the walk and turn test, which is the test you see on TV all the time, which is walking a line. And what you're going to do is you're going to walk a line heel to toe, nine steps up, nine steps, nine steps back. And we're looking to see how your balance is and how you follow directions. The third test is called the um, one-legged stand, which I'm going to ask you to stand on which other foot, which either foot you choose and count until I tell you to stop. And that's basically it. If you fail those tests, then you're arrested. You, I didn't have that much to drink. You're under arrest for driving under the influence of alcohol, uh, okay? Ah! Uh, They're not even tight. What are you crying about? Is the one wearing them? Huh? Is the one wearing them? I don't think Tony's tight or not. Okay. Let's go. Over to the car. Do you have anything in your pockets? My Drugs, gloves. weapons, anything no, like that? Don't move. Like okay. Nothing. Okay. Watch your head. Get in the car. All right. Okay. Once you are arrested, you will be transported to headquarters, 
you have the choice of taking a test which is chosen by the police officer. It's either breath, blood, or urine. We usually choose breath, um, basically never blood, okay? That's why you'll see your tube that you blow into, do a breath test. You have a choice whether you can take the test or you don't want to take the test. We give you that choice. If you choose option A, your license could be suspended for 30 days prior to you going to court for the motor vehicle charges. If you choose not to take the test, your license will be suspended up to six months before you go to court again. Next one, I, the undersigned, have been placed under arrest for operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor or drugs, hereby consent or refuse to a chemical analysis of my breath. No. You don't want to take the test. No, I told okay. you. You understand if you don't take the test, your license will be suspended up to six months. All right. You don't want to take it? No. Okay. I, I told you I didn't only had a couple of drinks. That's strictly up to you. Okay, sign right here that you refuse to take the test. Amanda, since we haven't got a hold of anybody, you're going to have to sit here in a cell until we can find somebody to pick you up because you can't drive. Okay?